This is the engine room of the ice factory and it's uh, basically a series of uh, large motors and compressors where the ammonia is compressed that provides the refrigeration to cool the brine tanks. The modern domestic refrigerator is exactly the same in principle with a, an electric motor and a compressor, obviously much smaller. But there was a gap of about uh, 30 years between developing these large ones and making something that was practical enough to put in a kitchen. Th these have quite a few problems. They leak, they are glands and valves on them, and also they're very smelly. The whole place smells strongly of ammonia. The General Electric Company of America decided that the best solution was to enclose the motor and the compressor in a single airtight container. Their first model appeared in 1926 and they advertised it as being so utterly reliable, so utterly dependable that we've been able to enclose all the moving parts in walls of steel. And it is rather a handsome contraption. The shape of this fridge was designed by the refrigeration engineers themselves. Here it's being demonstrated by Betty Davis in 1935. Good morning. Good morning. My dear, why didn't you wake me up? Oh, there's nothing to do, really. And people quarrel with the inconvenience of living so far out. It's really been the most delightful weekend I've had in years. I wouldn't live anywhere else. Of course, there's a difficulty of service. By the 1950s, specialist industrial designers and stylists had been brought in. They changed their fridge's appearance every year or so to keep in fashion and to present a sophisticated image. And behind the separate refrigerator door, brand new for 57, scientifically planned illumination in the interior. Not just one light to light the upper area, but two to give full illumination across the top and then a third light to light the lower shelf area. Simply take the handy tray and place it in the ice ejector. Then pull down on the handle. That's all. No pushing, no shoving. Simple, effortless. The handle does all the work for you. Ice cubes in a basket. Just like that. And cubes always stay separate and free from each other. It's new, it's exclusive for 1957. And how's this for convenience? The new juice can dispenser that drops a new can in place as soon as you remove one. As handy, as convenient as the frozen food package dispenser alongside. Remove one package and another is ready for instant use. For more features to demonstrate, it's the Imperial 121 for 1957. The modern fridge really is exactly the same as this one. It looks a bit different because the pipes and the motor and the compressor are now rather more discreetly put at the back of the fridge, the motor down here and the pipes up the top. Here we've cut the pipework circuit out of a modern fridge. This is the ice box, which is also the evaporator coil, pressed out of two sheets of aluminium. This is the sealed unit that contains the motor and, and compressor and the hot gas comes out here and it's cooled and condensed back to a liquid in these pipes at the back. Well, you can't actually see what's going on inside the evaporator. So Rex and I built this model in which we've replaced the evaporator by this glass jar. This is the liquid going into the evaporator here and it's evaporating inside the jar and returning to the, com to the compressor as a gas. I can feel the, the jar getting cold and the coils at the back are getting quite hot. The flow is controlled by this valve, just like the valve on the carbon dioxide cylinder. And in fact, early fridges had valves just like that. 
but we've been having great troubles to get the setting on the valve right. It tends to freeze up completely. In modern fridges, the valve has been replaced by a fine capillary tube. This has the same effect of restricting the flow. And to stop it freezing up, the tube runs up alongside the warmed gas coming back down again into the compressor. Various gases have been tried as refrigerants, but most were too toxic, corrosive or inflammable. Carbon dioxide itself is nearly ideal, but it has a rather strange property. It, uh, change, it sometimes can change directly from a gas to a solid, which I think we can show you with uh, this setup here. Um, if we, I'll work off with that if you turn it on. This so-called dry ice, it's very useful stuff. It's used for keeping things cold, and it's also used theatrically for creating effects of mist when it's usually put into hot water. But it wouldn't be much good as a refrigerant because the solid could keep blocking up the pipes. Today, most refrigerants are fluorocarbons. These are the same as the chemicals that are used as propellants in aerosol cans. They're ideal except for the hole they're making in the ozone layer. There are only a few ounces in each fridge, but there are a lot of fridges in the world and all the fluorocarbon escapes whenever a fridge is scrapped. We've cut the weld off this sealed unit so you can see what's inside. Most of it is really the motor. It all sits on these three springs which reduce the noise, and it sits in a puddle of oil, so that even on an old fridge, the whole thing looks almost brand new. <clears throat> Outside, the motor is connected to a bit of electrical gear. There's one device that gives the motor an extra kick to start it up, and another device to stop it if it gets too hot. The uh, compressor itself is a really little tiny lump that fits on the end. If I turn the motor around, I think you can see the piston going up and down. It's all very solidly made, because in the life of a fridge, it goes round several thousand million times. Inside, there are two reed valves, which let the refrigerant in one side and out the other. On this model, if we start it up, start the compressor going, you can see the piston flies up and down at a fair rate, and the refrigerant comes in one side, and it's pushed out the other side. Fridge compressors have a variety of other uses. They're often used for, as compressors for airbrushes, and they're even used by dentists sometimes, connected to the pipe that sucks the saliva out of your mouth. Compressors and compressed air actually have all sorts of uses. This capsule gun works entirely on compressed air. I made it a few years ago to uh, simulate bullet hits for films and TV. It's by necessity a bit complicated. The mechanism inside is a real plumber's nightmare. Here you've got a reciprocating cylinder which actually drives the bolt forwards and backwards. Um, when the charge, the capsule is put inside the breech and it goes to the full extremity forward, it fires compressed air down the barrel. It fires many types of capsule this one as a blood capsule and it would simulate a blood hit and of course these little fellows which are 